Mojave Audio and Rancho de la Luna have a very shared history as I was introduced to David Royer through our friend Victoria Williams who lives next door, an amazingly talented singer songwriter and awesome friend. And she told me that she had a friend that was making microphones. And the next thing we knew, Dave Royer showed up on his motorcycle with cut off shorts, no shirt and motorcycle boots. And he had in his hand a very beat up prototype of the Royer Ribbon 121 and told us that we should try it out. And if we liked it, we could purchase it from him. So we immediately started a new song and using it on everything. At the time we had a Soundcraft 1600 console and we had an LA2, which was about all the gear we had at the time. I think we had like a 57 or a 58. So having this new microphone was a huge addition. And we immediately wrote a song, Fred Drake and I wrote a song together. Um, he put up like a loop of some sort and I pulled out the 12 string and wrote it uh, all in one take, made it up. He added drums, which we had one channel with the 121 into the LA2. Uh, then we laid down some bass, he laid down some percussion, we laid down vocals, everything with the 121 and it sounded fantastic. And Dave uh, was kind enough to sell that mic to us and we became friends and he would visit anytime he was up here, which was a lot. He was visiting Victoria and some other friends. He, he really loved the high desert. So Dave shows up again on his motorcycle with shorts, sunburned, windburned, and he showed up with a prototype tube mic, battleship gray with a military grade case, both beat to hell because when he was testing his mics, he wanted to test the durability as well. So. He would throw them across the room. He would hammer nails with them. And they still sounded better than any mics I'd ever heard. And to this day, we still use that mic as a, one of our main drum rooms. And it, both those mics have been on pretty much every session since we got them. They've, they have not been excluded on any session, no matter who's been recording here or what gear they've bought. They've always been there. So fast forward a few more years and my good friend Dusty Wakeman and Dave started Mojave Audio and started making microphones. And uh, the first mics that we were able to get from them were the MA100s overheads that we started using as overhead mics, which didn't come down for years and years and years because they always sounded so fantastic. Occasionally we'd break them down and use them on acoustic guitars, which sounded great. And then as they started making different mics, we finally got a pair of the MA300s and started using those as overheads. And so now we go between those two different microphones as our overheads pretty much on anything I do. They're, they're on everything I do. Sometimes someone will bring something else to add to that. Some, some people, a lot of people come here because they love the drum sound here. And the biggest part of the drum sound is the prototype tube mic and the overheads. That's, those are the, the non-changing. Other, other mics come and go on the kicks and the, the toms, but those are always in place when I do things. And mostly when people come in and listen to the way the drums are sounding, they're very happy with the initial sounds and they don't move. So that's the kind of, that's our drum sound. It's really incredible to watch your friends evolve and create such wonderful pieces of gear that are useful, beautiful, and sound amazing. Uh, we've been lucky enough to have the MA37 here for a while. We've been using it a lot on a, we're making an album to celebrate 30 years here. And we have a lot of really amazing singers here. And that microphone has been incredibly useful. It really works with almost everyone. You know, as you know, the depth and scope of it is incredible. Uh, the richness, uh, the, it really brings out the best in people's vocals. It's not overly, you don't get a lot of sibilance or anything. It's a little darker and, you know, I love that because you can EQ it, but it, it really accepts everyone's vocals and tra uh, translates very well to something that's very workable for, for most everybody. 
had great success on acoustic guitars as well. I really like the, the fullness that we're getting out of, I have a couple of older Yamahas that are smaller bodies that sound amazing with it. It really translates well. It's really fun to uh, introduce people to the MA37 because everyone loves it, first of all. And it's great because they're, everyone that works here is, if they've worked here more than once, they know what I use for the sounds. And, it's, and it is a lot of the Mojave Audio gear. So it's, it's a welcome to have all this cool gear in with all the other stuff that, you know, is, is here. It really just fits and sits well with the, I mean, we are in the Mojave Desert, so <laughs> how much cooler can that get than having Mojave Audio as part of your sound? If you'd like to keep up with Rancho De La Luna, you can check us out at www.RanchoDeLaLuna.com. On Instagram, we're Rancho De La Luna Studio, and as well as X, which I don't know, I still call it Twitter, it's Rancho De La Luna. And we'll keep you informed as to what we're up to. And I want to thank Mojave Audio for having us. It's an honor to know such great people in such a magnificent company that make some of my very favorite things that we use to record here and have for years. <laughs>